The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Let's take a look at the German DAX. Uh, as you can see, we had a little bit of a bounce. We're still bouncing pretty good. We can clear that blue line. It's got a really good chance to uh, continue uh, the rally. We're seeing pretty much the same thing in the FTSE, but it is lagging far, far behind. And we'll get this up here to see what... Uh, uh, that messed up the first part of the show. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Hope I didn't do anything wrong. And you can see uh, where we're looking at the rally in the FTSE, and we're having an extension of the rally here. If you remember, folks, yesterday we were talking about the S&P, and uh, we were talking about the importance of that area up at 2940, and we also talked about the importance of 2900. And the, the reason why I'm going to bring this up is we had several people asking about it. It didn't go to 2900. It went to 2895. And if you take a look at that, you'll see that was an exact 382 retracement of the low from August the 15th. It was also very, very close to that perfect ABCD pattern that you can see there that came in at 2897 so uh, that's a very important now we are rallying back we're getting up into that 2935 again so that's going to be another interesting one uh, to look at uh, 2940 should be some pretty stiff resistance I wouldn't be surprised to take it out but then whether it goes back down below it or not you know remains to be seen oh good do we think uh, oh good uh, we have Stan Harley's going to be our guest at uh, at the half hour break at 930 today folks so so that'll be good. We haven't had Stan on for a couple weeks, so we have to give a hand of one hand clapping because that fellow has caused that bond market. He has been extremely bullish bonds, and they've gone, you know, ballistic. So we want to talk to him about that. That'll be uh, at the uh, at the half hour break. So that's another one. Now we need to um, do a little heads up here. We have uh, Ruby of Ruby and the Romantics with their call on the cattle. We want to move this over here. Uh, yeah, everybody loves Stan. He does superb work uh, being a technician like he is and an engineer. Here's the December cattle, folks. Uh, we talked about that 1.618 level, hit it exactly. Um, you know, that's the end of the Fibonacci spiral. If it goes beyond that, you know, God doesn't know where it's well she knows but she doesn't trade anymore but uh, that's had a nice rally of a couple cents off the bottom so if you're in that cattle you certainly don't want to uh, risk anything now it doesn't want to go down there and look at that 1.618 uh, number anymore we see the same thing in the the hogs I didn't uh, put the hogs up because I got too much to cover this morning I, I was trying to do too many things I guess but that's the way it goes but anyway uh, hogs have moved up pretty good uh, cattle have moved up pretty good, so those have, should have a pretty good bounce in here. It's still a bear market, but we should have a pretty good, uh, pretty good bounce. Now we need to uh, bring a couple others that we want to watch uh, on, and that is the uh, cup of Joe here. This is a this is a real interesting pattern here in the uh, in the coffee, folks. Uh, you'll notice here that we hit the exact 78% level down there at $93 a pound. We rallied up to $97 a pound. We pulled back to $94 a pound and then reversed and closing up on the day at $95.50 uh, uh, a pound. That that means that you can trade coffee for less than two cents a pound because if it trades below 94 again, most probably something's wrong. And that's the real beauty of when you're doing risk control with pattern recognition. You try to find those where you've made a really strong support level to hit, and then you retest it, and that tells you that there was no more selling there. And then you've got a chance to see the market rally uh, pretty nicely. That's really what you're trying to do with pattern recognition. It is a good way of looking at the probability of the trade working. You usually have uh, the odds are 
about two to three in your favor, around 60% or so. And the risk reward on those is usually two and a half to five to one, depending upon when you enter and what the strength of the downtrend or uptrend is. But that's that's what pattern recognition is all about, folks. That was handled in uh, Andrew Lowe's book, The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Street. And he has so many of the sophisticated uh, formulas in there that it's just, uh, it's really incredible. But, you know, if you practice it a little bit, you can see what he's talking about without having to know calculus and all the other stuff, you know. So that's just my two cents worth. So keep that uh, closely in mind. Um, someone's asked me a question about the uh, uh, tariffs, folks. I, I don't know anything about the tariffs. I do know that it's in the news all the time. So if they ever come to some agreement, that will most probably make the stock market go up. But heaven help it if it doesn't, because that means that news has already been in the market and the damage has been done and then we'll start down. But right now, all it takes is a little tweet here, a tweet there, a signature here, a signature there. And, you know, it could be a game changer in some of these things. The reason why you say that is because we've come back so strongly from those lows that we made back in, uh, you know, early August. And that's a, that's a very, very powerful sign. Uh, you know, we, we just barely yesterday, even with the sell-off, uh, the Dow down several hundred points, we could just barely make a 382 retracement, which is in itself, you know, quite bullish. And when you add to that, it was right at an ABCD. You know, that gives you a pretty good uh, indication of uh, what's happening. Now, I did listen to, uh, there was a little quick report today on uh, Bloomberg about uh, Jeff Grunlock of uh, uh, Double Line Capital. Uh, he says that the Federal Reserve has lost control. I think they lost control with Helicopter Ben myself, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Back in the days when I was trading on the Florida Exchange and also at Drexel, the big thing of the week was the 115 money supply, the M1 and M2 that came out. I mean, we lived and died on those in the T-bills, and that was the big market to trade during that time. That was before the S&P. You know, the T-bills were the – they were swinging the big hatchet. Uh, all over the world, uh, T bills, and uh, it was it was, and also uh, Jenny Mays were in there too, but um, the T bills uh, were really a big thing to trade. And of course, T bills were yielding, you know, 12, 13 percent back in the late 70s, and so the swings that we had were. Uh, amazing. Sometimes it would run three, four thousand dollars a day, much like we see some days. You know, it's real quietly in the rest. Here's here, David. David White is again salvaged me again. He's posted the Federal Reserve has lost control of interest rates, as evidenced by the federal funds rate trading higher than any part of the U.S. Treasury curve. Jess Grunlock, the chief executive of Double Line Capital, on Tuesday. What else you need to know to call an inversion? Grunlock said, and tell if everyone is, is paraphrasing all of these little arbitrary things, but we've got an inversion. Okay, now we got the BIX at 1580. That's had a nice move down. Uh, I will uh, ask Shane. As a matter of fact, I hope Shane is listening to us today. He usually does, and he could tell us whether the Fed has lost control. I mean, they're doing the usual thing. Whether Grunlock is right or not, it doesn't make any uh then the other thing. Oh, here's a little little caveat here. Grundelock says the only thing wrong with my uh, analysis here is that uh, uh, somebody at TFNN, uh, Mr. Larry Pesavento, is also said that the Fed has lost control. Hmm. Well, at least he's got a way out. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, let's be right back. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. C C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I did hear from Shane. He was listening, and he said the Fed is in total control, that they people that just don't understand how they uh, use the market uh, forces that they have in their favor, which I have to agree with that. He certainly led us uh, to the light uh, over this past few years listening to what he has to say, so I'll stick with him and think that the Fed still pretty much knows what they're doing. Remember, it's a private corporation, folks. It's not the U.S. government, even though it's on Pennsylvania uh, Boulevard there, Pennsylvania Avenue there in um, Washington, D.C., right down from the White House, but um, it is a private corporation. Let's uh, move on and talk a little bit about the uh, the sugar. Uh, put this up for Ruby. Uh, we're right at that area where we're in major support, back to that uh, level of around 11 cents, so we need to watch Watch it very, very closely. Going below there and, and, and breaking down in both coffee and sugar would be leading to the deflationary scenario. The same thing would be true in cattle and hogs. And But I really think they're going to hold up. That's just my two cents worth. But we'll have to uh, wait and see if that is uh, going to happen. All right. The next one we want to talk about is the slippery one from uh, – crude oil. Let's get up here and take a quick look at it. We got up to that 78% uh, level here. We hit 86.91 uh, last night. We're now trading at around 86.80, right at the 78% level. So whether this crude oil is going to be on top of the market or not, you know, we'll have to... Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But right now, it's acting relatively well. We'll keep a close eye on that. I guess that's my uh, thing that I fall back on when we look at it. Um, I don't think Shane has – he's pretty busy this morning, so he's not going to be able to call in. He Skyped me that told me that the Fed was still uh, in pretty much in control, and he spent so much time talking to us about that. And show he's actually you know proved to how they do it, so it's not anything wrong. Uh, oh, if he is, ho hopefully he gets in, we'll be able to uh, – we'll, we'll uh, chat with him if he does get in, so we'll see what goes on. Okay, you know, I think a part of the thing uh, – the uh, – Steve Rhodes is talking that the pumping of the global flow of capital is uh, is pretty very very important too. So, and a lot of that capital is in the bond market. And uh, well, I have, if there's any any problem in any market, I would think that would be it because that's the one that looks like a uh, uh, 
Okay, I'm sorry about that, Al. I uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to get you in a in a quagmire there, but I'll do my best to 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 work through that. But we will have Stan Harley as our guest at the half hour level. Um, one person asked about the Bitcoin, so let's take a quick look here uh, at the Bitcoin. It's actually held up pretty nicely down at that uh, 9800 level, and uh, we started to come back again. So you, you had that really nice bottom in there. You see those 78% bottoms right there? It's really nice. I mean, this is a four-hour chart, so it covers uh, several weeks. And uh, the 78% level on each of the pullbacks has been uh, pretty much spot on. That tells you that even though there's a lot of different exchanges, you know, that's it. You're right. The, st the stock market is not the economy. I agree with that. Uh, and what Bernard Baruch said in his book, it's not a stock market. It's a market of stocks. So that's important. That book that he wrote, the autobiography uh, called My Own Story, is one of the best books about psychology you can ever get in because two of the things in that book. Oh, Shane, are you on the line? Good morning, Larry. How are you? Hey, good morning. Uh, well, we had someone said that the Fed's out of control. You want to give us your two cents worth, my friend? Well, uh, can you see the screen that I have here? Uh, you know, I don't. I have not been able to see it, but let's just double check here. Uh, no, I don't think so. But we'll get it posted for you. So just go ahead, and then we'll post that chart so you'll be able to see it. Okay. So I think in essence, what people are looking at is they're they're looking at the yield curve inversion, the two-year inverting across the ten-year, and uh, you know, of course, the ten-year is the most liquid you know instrument that we have in the bonds. And when that's happened in the past, uh, that has always been a signal of recession. Um, and initially, there's there's no initial reaction seen, but traditionally, poor economic data usually follows at some point uh, close after the inversion. So we, we really haven't seen that quite yet. Uh, we've seen some issues with manufacturing, but the jobs is more or less stable. Retail sales, good. Walmart's been having good numbers. So we're, I, I don't really see any economic data yet. Um, to follow that, uh, and we've all usually we've seen these large downturns in stocks and recessions following the yield curves, uh, and that's the tr that's the traditional formula of the yield curve inversions. So they're looking at uh, the Fed funds rate being the short term being you know too high in, in essence, and they're saying the Fed has lost control. But what they're not looking at is what's going on behind the scenes, and the Fed has essentially figured out how to uh, keep these rates. You know, relatively high. I say relatively high because, uh, of course, we have these negative yield rates across the world. Um, the United States, the two-year right now is holding right around 1.51%, uh, which is much, much higher than countries like Germany and Denmark that are, you know, negative 0.92%. Um, and a lot of these countries right now that are that are in these negative yields. Um, when you look at Spain, Belgium, France, uh, Germany, Denmark, these are a lot of the countries that have very high entitlement type of um, economies. They have this socialized medicine. So I think what you're seeing is, I mean, my feeling is that these types of um, programs weigh on the economy. So it creates problems for these countries. Now, if you were just looking at that, you might say, yes, they're lo losing control. But I don't think so because I think what the Fed wants to do is create – you know, they want to create strength in the U.S. dollar. The dollar is the world reserve currency. So they're trying to achieve that objective on one hand. On the other hand, they're behind the scenes. They're they're still creating this juice on the markets. Now, this is what I measure. This is what I, I collect every day. I look at this broad range of data that I get from the Fed. And so they're not really looking at that. They're just looking at the surface. They're looking at these inversions. So from that perspective, you know, yes, they, they're probably saying the Fed has lost control. But from what I look at behind the scenes, I see no signs of that. In fact, I see a Fed that is completely in control of these markets, and uh, I think they've stemmed the selling now, and I think that we are ready to go much higher on this market. And I think we're on the verge of not just a bull, but I think a super bull. I think this is this one's going to go uh, probably a year, a year and a half, and it's going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of things now that can come out and happen. You've got the Jackson Hole speech this Friday. And so people remember, this is when Bernanke sent the markets to the stratosphere on this. This is a very important speech. Now, the last time 
the Fed spoke. They misspoke and said that this was, this was a mid-rate adjustment. And then Trump came out and misspoke. So there was a lot of misspeaking. I guarantee you the Fed is not going to do that again on Friday. They're going to come out with with very positive language for the markets. And all that has to happen is to give a strong speech. You could, you know, they're probably going to be cutting the next two meetings. I think there's room for a cut in between because they want to bring the front end of that yield curve down. If that happens, and then if Trump signs some type of a, a truce with China, I think you're going to see this bull take off. And I think your guest that comes on at the half hour, I th if I recall correctly, I think Stan Harley is also bullish on this market. But I think this is going to be a Super Bowl coming up. I think it's going to be at least a year, probably a year and a half run on this market. And I think it's going to be it's going to take a lot of people by surprise. Mm -hmm. That certainly makes sense. Well, I want to thank you for calling in today because we've had several questions about, you know, Grundlock and, you know, some of the things that people say. But, you know, he's a big shot, so people uh, put him on Bloomberg, and if he says something, everybody listens. So thanks for calling in, Shane. Thanks, I really appreciate it. Shane Smolley, WolfTrader.com. Thank you very much, my friend. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter on the line. Stan, are you there? Good morning, Larry. Good morning to you. Uh, Stan, is any uh, truth to the rumor you're going to change the name of your letter to the Stan Harley bond market letter? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> well, hey, my friend, I think you should get a sound of uh, a whole lot of people clapping because when you were on here a month ago, you were extremely bullish bonds. And my goodness, we had one of the biggest uh, moves in the you know two-week period that we've had in bonds. So my hat's off to you on that. And I, I assume you're still looking at higher prices uh, down the road? Um, I think, uh, yeah, we've had a really nice uh, move up here in bonds. Uh, we're we're up uh, it we're up against an upper pattern pattern boundary of a, a one by one channel um, that I showed in my newsletter and I don't know whether you have that and you can show that on the screen. I, I but, don't I uh, don't have it. Uh, I'll, I'm going to try to find it. I, I I know I've printed it out, but unfortunately I can't I can't print the charts. So just keep talking, my friend. I'll find it. Go ahead. Okay, sure. The uh, the bond market uh, has been in a strong uptrend i think it's going to continue to go higher uh for about another three plus years but in the uh intermediate term we're probably up near some kind of a, a high we tend to make uh highs and bonds lows and interest rates on average about every 40 months and uh we're getting pretty near to that time frame right now for the next high so uh i think we might push a little bit higher uh perhaps into early september but uh, not a whole heck of a lot higher from where we are right now. Uh, yields have come way down, uh, both yields on the 30-year as well as the 10-year are down near historic lows. Um, and uh, what can I say? Yeah, it's been, been quite a move, but uh, I think uh, it's probably, from the intermediate term perspective, it's probably getting rather mature right now. Okay, Stan, the other question that I have for you uh, from one of our listeners is about negative interest rates. I mean, do you have any opinion on that? I know they're in several countries, Spain, Sweden, and you know, Germany, and uh, Portugal, places like that. But uh, do you have any uh, feeling on that as whether we're going to see that here in the U.S.? Larry, I don't know. Um, okay. From a, from a longer term perspective, uh, you and I've talked about this. There is a uh, very well pronounced 40 year cycle in interest rates, and uh, that cycle last uh, turned in October of '81. I think uh, it's going to bottom at the tail end of uh, 2022. How low we get, I don't know. The the uh, back in 1940, the yield got down to uh, just under two percent on the 30 year. So my guess is we'll make some kind of double bottom with that. Could be a little above. Could be a little bit below. Whether it goes negative or not, I, I, I can't say. I don't know. Wow, I know. It's really amazing the stuff that you hear going on in the markets anymore. I mean, everybody's got a different opinion, but I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, Stan, tell us about stocks. I know you're very, very bullish. I mean, we're, we've uh, really had a really big bounce here, and we've gone sideways here now for seven or eight days. Looks like we're ready to, to break out on the upside. Do you see that happening now? or? Um. I, I, I'm, I'm officially bullish with time or die, yes, yes. But uh, in, a, in a broader context, um, I'm, I'm saying the bull market express is, uh, is on hold right now, Larry, mm -hmm. and probably will be for a couple of months. I think okay. the, uh, the high we saw here uh, back on July 26 is probably going to stand for a couple of months. Um, and we are in a sideways to modest downward consolidation phase right now that I think is going to run through uh, – through the middle of October. We tend to make uh, lows about every 19 to 20 weeks on average, plus or minus. Mm -hmm. um, and the next uh, low point in that cycle is due in mid-October. So uh, I think we're looking at a sideways congestion here with uh, not much upside potential. I don't see the July 26 highs being taken out for at least a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Longer term, uh, yeah, I think we will. But uh, that's probably not coming until mm, maybe Thanksgiving, something like that. Um, so I'm looking for a narrow range, choppy market, difficult to trade, little up, little down, little up, little down. We, we're pushing marginally right now above the 18-day moving average, which, by the way, is still coming downhill. <clears throat> uh, I'm looking to chart the S&P. We're just modestly above it. Uh, this market is not going to go appreciably higher with that 18-day moving average still coming downhill. There's got to be some back-and-fill structure either side of that 18-day to cause it to level off. Once that takes place, we can push a little higher. I think we'll push up towards the upper end of the range, maybe see some some resistance uh, at the 50-day uh, moving average, which on the S&P comes in about 29.47 right now. Uh, but uh, I, 
I, I kind of keep your bull horns uh, in the closet for uh, for at least a couple of months. That's my message. <laughs> okay, that sounds pretty good. I've got another question here. I don't, you know, know if uh, uh, <laughs> if it's in your bailiwick to answer. But uh, what is your feeling about when the president talks about uh, tweeting about, you know, bad mouthing the Fed? I mean, I've never heard of any president ever doing that. Do you have an opinion of what's going on there at all, Stan? Um, uh, well, I. <clears throat> That's what I said. Wow, I didn't know how to answer it. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I you know, on, on a program about technical analysis of the markets, I'm I'm very uh, leery about yeah. waiting in on anything uh, political. Um, okay, yeah, good. I, I uh, <laughs> yeah, I I just don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. but, Stan, is there any? Don't, don't draw don't draw anything plus or minus from that comment, please. Okay, um, hey, I, I try not I, to. I want to you... see. By the way, I want to see the leader of the country succeed. Because if the leader of the country succeeds, the country succeeds. I yes, don't want to see the leader sure. fail. I want to see the country succeed. Yeah, I, I, whoever that is, that's for sure. <laughs> whoever that is, yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, you know, Stan, I'm a, you know, we've known each other a long, long time, and I'm, I'm, I'm really a technician. So when people ask me some of these questions, I say, my God, where do they come up with these? But I, I really don't know. Um, you know what to say. I always say it's beyond my pay grade, but uh, you know it's uh, it's you know I you know I've got a couple of degrees even, but it's embarrassing when I don't know the answer to them because all I do is I look at the charts and if I see something going up, there's more buying. If I see something going down, there's more selling. It's not much harder than that, you know. Well, and, you, uh, and I are, you and I are technicians, and I think the 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 Federal Reserve is staffed with some exceptionally competent people. Uh, but they are, truth be known, they are really not market technicians like you and I. They are quantitative analysts. They do a lot of multiple regression modeling and so forth. Uh, and they do the very, very best they can. Uh, and for people to come down on them, I think is probably inappropriate. They really are doing the best job they can. Uh, yeah. So be that as it may. <clears throat> Is there one? Is there one trade here uh, over the next couple of weeks that looks the best to you, Stan? That uh, you know that you've got on your uh, radar? Uh, Larry, I'm sorry to say no. I don't see uh, I don't see a lot of upside potential in, in bonds. I think we're near the upper end of the range, uh, mm -hmm. and stocks also I think are in a sideways congestion band for about the next two months. Mm -hmm. So uh, from an investment perspective, it's going to be darn difficult, choppy, and difficult to trade. Oh, so just like it's been for the last 170 years, pretty much? <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. Hey, listen, buddy, I want to thank for having you on. I'm sorry I put you on the spot a couple of times, but uh, uh, I don't have the answers either. So if you don't and, and I don't, then I think we're okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, hey thank you very much, thank Stan. You. You bet. Stan Harley, the Stan Harley stock market letter and the Stan Harley should be bond letter because he really nailed it. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Uh, okay, here, if you hold on, folks, I wanted to uh, put up the chart here that uh, Shane was kind enough to send us about the Fed juice because it does a pretty good job of uh, showing what's been going on. And as you can see, it's <laughs> it follows the market pretty much what uh, what's happening. So they must have some control. Remember, folks, we have 12 Federal Reserve banks, and each of them has a whole bunch of traders in there, usually between 100 and 200 traders, you know, doing stuff in the markets and stuff. So, uh, you know, they know what they're doing, whether they're doing it the right way or not remains to be seen. I'm probably getting more questions about the uh, uh, the currencies than I am about stocks uh, the last uh, uh, 24 hours uh, and I believe it's very important because that euro is still trying to hold above that 11060 uh, level we're down at 11097 right now and I believe it's going to hold that level but we'll have to uh, you know watch it very very closely that's uh, that's for sure uh, you know at least that's the way it looks like uh, from you know just basically you know watching the charts uh, so we want to watch it very very closely okay let's uh, move on to a couple of things on the currency since we're on that the uh, Japanese yen has held that really important level down around the 105 it's had a really good oh I'll be happy to take care of the gold and silver here not a problem here here. Um, the gold, I believe, we're in a corrective mode in the gold market. I sent out a special video on that last night saying that the support should come in around 1507 today. So far, we rallied up to 1514. I don't believe gold's going to get any higher than 1524 to 1525 on this little run here that we have. The $64 question is, is whether it's going to go blasting above that. If we can get gold above 1530, then we're going to probably make new highs. But right now it looks like the gold is in some type of a of a correction we, we corrected fifty six dollars to the downside we rallied back thirty four so that fits it up and what we've done now is just gone sideways for four or five days not bearish of course but uh, we haven't exploded to the upside either that could happen supposedly but right now we're just chopping around in here which is uh, pretty much uh, I think normal silver is acting a little weaker than the gold market but uh, you know it's still uh, it's had a heck of a run look where silver was here just last Friday folks you know we were up around you know 15 uh, 23 or so that's the gold sorry 15 23 we're trading at 15 12 right now so that hasn't given up hardly any at all correct and uh, the platinum you know platinum had a really nice move we bought platinum um, just a two days ago and uh, we were stopped out of it today for a very nice profit. And, uh, you know, that's still holding up at the uh, 835 level. As long as it can stay above that, it's looking uh, pretty good. Let me do silver here so we don't keep it as a uh, 
uh, wow, what did I do here? I marked silver on my charts, and it's the gold, and I marked the gold, and it's the silver. Boy, oh, boy, shut the front door and raise the rent. Here's the silver. Um, the silver is really interesting because uh, we've had dropping open interest. I checked it yesterday, uh, the same thing, dropping open interest, and uh, another one. We're seeing the same thing in notes and bonds, too, dropping open interest. That means there's less players in there, so that's not a bullish sign on either one of these, but uh, we're trading around. Uh, 17 bucks here uh, in the silver this morning, so it's held up, uh, you know, relatively well. Uh, what we would like to be doing is when we do get a pullback in this, uh, that we get a really clear pattern, then we would really want to be a buyer of the gold and silver because that those weekly breakouts, you have to respect those. That was one of the things that Gartley talked about in his book, you know, the uh, – profits in the stock market from 1937 was to watch weekly breakouts because they can lead to you know really really big things and I think that's uh, relatively uh, important regarding the notes I wanted to bring this up to you just to show you since we had Stan on the line and said that they might be ready you know to take a little breather you can see here on the long-term monthly chart you know we made a 78 percent retracement and 1.27 expansion uh, this past week when we had that big move up and whether we're going to and remember how many months we've been up we've only been down uh, one month out of the out of the 12 we've had some uh, where it didn't make new highs but it certainly never made new lows so it's been making higher highs now you know for well over a year uh, and that in itself makes it uh, uh, quite a bit overbought but whether that uh, remains to be seen uh, is uh, important we'll have to uh, decide uh, down the road here a little bit now where are we where, where the question is are we going to get to that uh, 2940 level in the uh, in the s and p uh, I'm not really sure but uh, we did hit a key level here in the national NASDAQ right around the 7765 level. Uh, that looks pretty good. And we're 2930 net S&P is, uh, is going to be interesting to look at also. Pay close attention to – I'm switching back and forth because I'm watching my monitor because I, I'm, you know, I have orders in on a few things. But watch that crude oil, folks, because that, that's got a lot of things up there that uh, – uh, a lot of ABCD expansion patterns and everything uh, at that 57 level in October crude uh, really is uh, really strong resistance. And, you know, we could make 57.40 or something like that. But that is a really nice ABCD pattern that we focused on when we first started this show. And we ought to bring it up again just to let the folks, uh, you know, take a look at it. Uh, just to see you can get a little bit higher. Now, this happens to be, let's get this up here. This is September crude. Uh, I switched over to October uh, on Monday, and but this is September crude. It, it, there, there's a little bit different. September is trading a little bit less than the uh, – than the October. So, you know, kind of watch that. That's uh, another one that looks, uh, you know, pretty interesting, I think, uh, from that perspective. And again, uh, you got to remember the importance of this number here in the uh, S&P that we posted here on uh, Monday. Uh, you know, we're back up to this uh, almost there right now. We're 2828 or 2928. If we could get to 2932 or something like that, 2935, 2940, but a lot of resistance up there, folks. So that's uh, uh, pay attention to that. Those numbers are they're technical numbers, but by golly, if you look at them over a long period of time, you're going to see that, uh, yep, they do give you a pretty good uh, idea of what's going on. And the VIX index has certainly told us that it's not going. In fact, is we, we, we thought the VIX index was going to be coming down here. You can see it. Uh, we, it's below 16 now, so we're right near that uh, area. It's, uh, yeah, it should be completing the ABCD there uh, at around 15 and change. So that should be just about right with the stock market up, you know, 200 points. So that completes that ABCD uh, in that VIX index. Index. So it trades pretty nicely, but, uh, you know, a lot of things do, a lot of things don't. That's uh, bottom line. All righty, you have one other question here, and that is about the um, Treasury, uh, excuse me, the emerging market. Let's get this up here because we uh, brought this to your attention over the weekend that uh, we had that breakout of that triangle that we were expecting. Uh, we broke about 8% below it. We completed the ABCD pattern almost at a double bottom, which is the 61% retracement. All of these markets have held, folks, every single one of these, uh, the, the Hang Seng, uh, the Chinese market, the emerging markets, uh, most of the markets in Europe, all have held up. So that means a really important support here was hit this week. So um, 
we'll just uh, just watch that. If that breaks, then we're going to be looking at much lower prices down the road. But right now, you know, these markets have a bullish bias. If we close strongly above 29.40 in the S&P, we we could be looking at some really big. Uh, really big moves uh you know going up into um you know 3000 without any trouble at all that's that's not very far away 877-927-6648 I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted the uh, a forecast of what we're looking at here in the stocks for today. This is the NASDAQ, and remember, it is certainly experimental. You know, trade it at your at your own risk. You certainly don't want to, uh, you know, if it doesn't work after about 10 or 15 minutes, it's probably 100% wrong. And that happens about 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90% of the time, but who knows? Another one that looks uh, real interesting here uh, that has been pretty nice uh, today uh, as far as uh, being able to forecast what's going on, and that is the, uh, the gold market. And if it's correct, the gold market should top here in about an hour and a half at around 11 o'clock Eastern time. 
and then we'll see what's happening. Remember, this is experimental. It's based on, uh, you know, neural network stuff, but uh, it works part of the time, just like technical analysis. It all works part of the time. That's the, the bottom line. It's just to uh, keep a very, very close eye on that because it's uh, it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty important. Um, uh, the British pound, we keep getting questions about that. I really think the British pound is trying to make some type of a bottom here, folks. You'll notice here that we've hit that 120 level. We're trading around 121.50 uh, this morning. Uh, it's held relatively well, but it's close enough that it takes one bad news and it could just literally disseminate. So uh, you've got to be, uh, I don't know if disseminate's the right word, but it, it could literally fall out of bed. Let's put it in the vernacular of southern Indiana that we can all understand. So below that 20 area, 120 area in the British pound, you don't need to be a hero uh, be, to try to pick a bottom. It's it's not safe unless you've got a really close stop in, and that's a good advantage of foreign exchange. It'll take on almost any order that you bring to it attention. We're still close to the bottom in the euro. It's trading at below 111. If we get a below 110, it's not going to have many friends, folks. And that means the U.S. dollar will most probably be breaking out above 98.50. And if we look at that 98.50 like we have many times here over the past few days, you'll see that uh, there's going to be a big breakout to the upside uh, if that does happen in the U.S. dollar index. So let's pay attention to that. And the most important thing of the day is to live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless and try to do something for someone who has a whole lot less than you today. See you.